hey, 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 what is going on, guys? This is Jason with Jadden Aquatics. Thanks for hanging out with me in the fish room. Yes, today we are going to talk about the breeding and care of rainbow fish. And I know the first thing you're thinking is, Jason, you always film at first in front of the rainbow fish tank. And today you're not filming in front of the rainbow fish tank when you're talking about rainbows. Yeah, I know I decided to change up the scenery a little bit, so we ended up in front of the, uh, the angel fish tank. So, that's irrelevant to this conversation because we're gonna get around to plenty of rainbow fish tanks. So let's talk a little bit about rainbow fish. First of all, most all rainbow fish come from Australia and uh, New Guinea. It's pretty interesting. Um, there are tons and tons of undiscovered species uh, of rainbow fish and part of the problem is is a lot of New Guinea uh, is not accessible. There's no roads, there's no uh, plane flights into certain areas and it's just it's just dangerous um, especially due to the uh, saltwater crocodile population. So there's so many fish that are currently uh, just undiscovered. So there's could be hundreds, possibly thousands of more uh, other types of rainbow fish that could not actually be found in New Guinea. But what's actually interesting is that, so you have Australia here, then you have uh, New Guinea above it. They believe that about six to 7,000 years ago that actually those two places were actually connected. Um, actually along the edges, some of the, the, the rivers and stuff that are on the edges of the, of the northern part of Australia and the southern part of New Guinea, have uh, some of the about 80% of the same uh, type of rainbow fish that are in both of them, uh, which tends to tell you that those things were obviously connected uh, at, at one time. I always thought it would be so cool to be able to go over to some place like New Guinea and actually go in there and actually discover some new rainbow fish species. But when I've watched some of these gold mining shows that have gone over to New Guinea, and how like really dangerous it is there because uh, there's so much gold to be found there that people are just getting shot left and right and then uh, the saltwater crocodiles are like so incredibly aggressive like that doesn't look like fun to me anymore I think I'll just stay and play in the rivers here in Texas and keep all of my appendages there's not been a lot of study on uh, specific rainbow fish and really the way that they exist in the wild. They don't know a lot about the way they spawned in the wild. Uh, they don't know a lot about uh, the fry grow out in the wild, how many survive, how quick they grow. No one is really sure because they've never really taken the time to be able to do that. Almost everything that we know about rainbow fish have all been learned in aquarium. So let's go around and let's look at some tanks and let's talk a little bit more about uh, different types of setup and how we get these things to breed. All right, so most rainbow fish come from areas where it's really, really heavily planted. So rainbow fish do fantastic and really heavily planted tanks. Uh, these guys are really great community fish. I mean, they typically just get along with everything. About the only thing you really need to worry about about rainbow fish is their ability to jump. You need to have a top on because if you don't have a top on, it's inevitable you're gonna have one jump and you're gonna have one die. Anybody that has rainbow fish, including myself, has experienced this a few times. Um, so that's why you'll see tops on all of my rainbow fish tank. Now here we have uh, some dwarf praycocks uh, rainbows. And now this is one of the ways that you can actually uh, set these guys up to breed. Um, you can just have them in a community tank. Um, almost every single rainbow fish that there is um, will breed using a spawning mop. So we've got a, a spawning mop back there in the back. All that does is that just makes the fish think that that is some type of plant. And so in the wild, they're gonna take their eggs and place those into uh, that plant. And then the male's gonna come by and fertilize them. And so that's just a, uh, again, that's just fooling them into thinking that uh, there is actually uh, plants in there. If you guys are enjoying this video, would you take just a quick second and click the like button? That way YouTube will share this video with other people. And for the 62.4% of you that are watching this video that are not subscribed to my channel, would love for you guys to become a part of my community and just click that subscribe button. It would really mean a lot to me. 
But one of the things you need to keep in, in mind, and you say, Jason, yeah, look, they love heavily planted tanks, but your tank is not heavily planted at all. And part of the reason for that is, is because if you put a lot of plants in there, the chances of them using the spawning mop goes way, way down. And if you don't get them to use the spawning mop, then you don't have the ability to remove the eggs. So you're not going to have that good of a, a hatch out rate and you're sure not going to have that great of ability to actually grow your fry up because rainbow fish are super, super, super easy to get to breed, but they are extremely difficult to grow them up to a size that you can actually begin to feed them normal flake food because when they're born, they're so tiny that you have to feed them super, super small foods and you have to feed them a lot to get them to survive. But we'll talk about that in more detail in another video. We just want to talk about breeding now. So again, we uh, we have the spawning mop in here, and so we don't really need to worry so much about um, which ones are which ones are males and which ones are females because we just got uh, a bunch of them in here. But it's pretty easy uh, on almost all uh, rainbow species. Uh, the males typically just you know just have a better color pattern. They're just usually more beautiful. The praycoxes are some of the ones that don't have such a big difference. Uh, you can see over here the female. The female spins on the praycox is usually kind of a light orange. They just don't have the coloration um, that the males do. Now some of the other ones like the Australians or the Bosmani, it's extremely easy to tell the difference between the males and the females because the males are just super uh, bright colors. So by having this big group in here together, um, you know you're going to have some males, you're going to know you're going to have some females, and you're constantly going to have uh, some type of spawning activity. But you only need one pair because most rainbow fish will lay eggs every single day. Some will lay more and some will lay less. I have some Australian rainbows that I swear they'll lay 40 or 50 eggs every single day. And then I have some other rainbows like some Gorder River and those guys seem to only lay about five or so eggs a day. So when you have a situation like this with all these females and all these males, you're gonna get a bunch of eggs laid. But the one thing you need to keep in mind is that since you're laying so many eggs in there, the fish begin to learn that there are eggs back there in that spawning mob. And most of them really, really love the taste of eggs. So they're gonna get in there and they're gonna try to eat those eggs so that you're not going to have as many uh, survive uh, as you want. And so your other choices, if you don't want to go the spawning mop route, you can put them in a densely planted tank and then you can allow the fish just to lay their eggs wherever they want to and let them hatch out that way but you're gonna have a very, very difficult time uh, trying to raise those fry up. Because uh, when rainbow fish are young, they like to come to the top of the water uh, to feed. So you're gonna have to have a lot of covering up at the top to keep those adults from eating those um, babies. And then you're gonna have to uh, be able to feed them some really, really small type foods. Again, we'll talk about that more in the next video. But that is a difficult situation to breed them. And depending on the type of numbers that you actually want to breed um, you're not going to get you're, in other words you're going to get a really really low percentage of ones that survive whereas if you're taking them like this and you're actually removing those spawning mops you can breed a ton of these fish every single month so let's look at a uh, another setup that we can use when breeding our rainbow fish okay right here we have a, a 20 gallon high and uh, these guys in here, these are uh, yellow rainbows. And uh, these are just, this is strictly set up as a breeding tank. And so we've got, uh, again, a 20 gallon high. Uh, we've just got uh, nothing really on the bottom except what needs to be clean. And then we've got a spawning mop again back there in the back. So um, you can come to this tank every single day and pull these spawning mops out and be able to uh, check those for eggs. We'll, we'll talk about that uh, in just a little bit. Uh, one thing you'll notice right now is if you look at this male, uh, this is one of the things that's very indicative of rainbow fish, is this male gets this bright silver spot uh, on the top of his head. And that means he is trying to lure that female into that spawning mop back there and, getting, and wants her to spawn. That's kind of his signal to her uh, that he wants her to spawn. 
Over here, we've got the uh, uh, exact same type of setup. We've got Kamaka uh, rainbows actually in here. Uh, again, got the spawning mop back there with just a sponge filter and just a bare bottom to take care of. All right, so you've decided on your setup that you want to uh, do to get these guys to breed. Next thing we want to talk about is uh, food that you want to feed them. You could feed these guys just a good flake food and they're gonna lay eggs. I mean, it's just about impossible to stop them uh, from laying eggs. But it, if you want to get a better production, uh, then you're gonna provide them some type of better food. So if you provide these guys with live baby brine shrimp all the time, you're gonna get those females big and fat and they're gonna have more and more eggs they're gonna be able to produce. So the better the food that you give the guys, the better uh, chance you have of having more eggs. Now these guys will eat just about anything, uh, live, uh, live baby brine shrimp again, or you can use frozen uh, brine shrimp, uh, frozen daphnia, live daphnia. Again, you, just about any choice you have for just about any uh, tropical fish that's out there, these guys um, will eat. Okay, so you've had your fish together um, for just a, a couple of days. So the next thing you need to do is you need to be able to uh, pull your spawning mops if you're using this method. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna pull one of these spawning mops and we're gonna take a look at it and figure out what our next choice of action is. Okay, so if you have decided to do the spawning mop method, um, real simple now. You make the decision how often you want to check that spawning mop and let's say you're going to do it daily. So we're going to come in here and today is the day to check it. We just simply reach in here, we grab it like this and then we pull this thing out. And normally I would do this over the tank, but you don't want it sitting here dripping like this because it makes a mess. So what I do is I just take this thing and I just fold it in half like that and then I just give it a twist. Now granted, I would normally do this over the tank and not over my floor, but I want you guys to see exactly what it is. Because all you're trying to do is get enough water out so this thing is not dripping um, all over the place. And then some people do it different ways. Again, we'll talk about this more in the next video. Some people may actually take this, go put this in another tank, never even look through it, and let the eggs hatch in another tank. And then some people want to take them and actually pull every single egg out, put it in some water with some methylene blue, and hatch it out um, that way. So if you were deciding that you wanted to pull the eggs, you just simply start looking through the, the mop like this. And if you look right here, if it'll focus on it, you see there's a rainbow fish egg. Uh, they're very easy to know because they just, they, they kind of look like a crystal ball. Uh, so they're very easy uh, to find. So, you know, you just simply, you can simply just grab the egg and pull it off and then uh, put it into the uh, methylene blue water. But again, we're gonna talk about it in a later video so you guys can understand that a little bit more. And then whenever you're done with pulling those eggs out, you can simply just put it back in there again. One thing I wanna talk about though is um, with all the different rainbow species that are out there, they will all interbreed with each other and cause hybridization. And one thing right now, there's not a lot of hybridized uh, rainbow fish. I, I'm not the hybridization police. I, I don't really care about hybrids. They don't bother me uh, at all. But with rainbow fish, there's already so many beautiful rainbow fish and a lot of people don't really keep rainbow fish that there's really no reason to create any hybrids uh, of them currently. And so if you'll notice in here, I actually have two different types. I have these praycocks and then I have some uh, wapaga uh, rainbow fish that are actually growing out in here that I bought as little bitty ones. And so the spawning mop you see in here right now, I don't actually pull this mop and use it because I know some of these wapagas are actually getting to the point where they're uh, just about ready to breed. And so I don't want a, a, a praycox, a wapaga hybrid. And so I don't currently pull uh, that one right now because I'm not trying to breed uh, praycox rainbow fish right now. All right, so I hope you guys have enjoyed this. I hope uh, you understand a little bit more about what it takes to actually uh, breed rainbow fish. Super, super, super easy, but be sure and stay tuned uh, for the next video because that's when we really get into the difficult part of, of uh, breeding rainbow fish, and that is taking those babies and actually getting those things to grow up and hopefully into an adult because Rainbow fish are some of the slowest growing fry that you have ever seen. So you guys got any questions or comments, be sure and leave them down below. So thanks again, guys, and God bless.